morning, church. It's awesome to see you. It's awesome to be here with you this morning in your lounge, wherever you are. You know, we were just praying. Honestly, the power of prayer changes everything, gets you out of your head and gets you into the Spirit and gets you remembering how massive God is and why He deserves the praise, why we serve Him. Can you imagine doing life without Jesus? I cannot. So, man, I just want to give Him glory this morning, and I just want you to join us in giving Him praise, giving Him the glory He deserves. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let's do that this morning with everything in our fiber of our beings that He created for His glory. Let's give Him some praise, yeah? Let's go. Oh, He's good. Sing, you've turned it all around. You've turned it all around. Where I was hurting, now I'm rejoicing. In your love I'm found, and I am joy. You took away my pain. You turned my morning into dancing. And I can smile again. So I will praise you. 
praise you. Come on church, I just encourage you right now. Why don't you just fix your gaze on him?
that's how long I bring you praise And that's how long you're worthy And that's how long I bring you praise And that's how long you're worthy And that's how long Come on, let's lift it up That's how long And that's how long you're worthy And that's how long I bring you praise And that's how long that's how long you were me. That's how long you were me. That's how long I've been That's how long you were me. That's how long. Worthy 
as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all name. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all name. Oh, be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. awesome time of worship, what an awesome time of declaring how worthy our God is, worthy is the name of Jesus. I just want to remind you this morning and encourage you this morning of why He's worthy of our worship. Have you ever wondered that we're singing, worthy is your name? Why is He worthy? Is He worthy because He is the Son of God? Amen. He's the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And that alone makes Him worthy of our worship, of our adoration, of our singing. The book of Revelation talks about the angels and the elders gathered around the throne and they're they're singing, they're worshiping and they're saying, worthy is the lamb that was slain because the lamb that was slain, Jesus dying on the cross for you and I, giving up his life, makes him worthy of our praise, worthy to receive glory and honor and power and strength. Come on this morning, I want to encourage you from the book of Romans chapter 5. Um, verse 6 I just want to read this passage to you it says for when we were still without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly for scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die but God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners Christ died for us much more than having now been justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him 
this is the part I want to encourage you with. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Come on. Much more shall we be saved by His life. We don't serve a God who only died, but we, receive, we serve a God who was alive, who rose from the dead. And if His death accomplished so much for us, if His death um, made us, uh, justified us to the Father, how much more are we being saved through His life? I want to encourage you this morning that He is still working. He is still moving in your midst. I don't know what circumstances you might be facing. I don't know what you're going through as individuals or as a family, but I want to encourage you that He is alive and He is working in your situation, in your midst right now, and that is why He is worthy. Come on, that's why we can worship and we can declare, worthy is the name of Jesus, worthy to be praised, worthy of my worship. So come on, God, we thank you. We thank you for all that you have accomplished on our behalf, Lord God. We thank you for your death, Lord, that brought us life. We thank you for your resurrection power, Lord God. We thank you for the work that you are accomplishing on our behalf right now, standing before the Father on our behalf. Lord, you are working. You are moving. Lord, thank you for the healing that is taking place. Thank you for your provision that is taking place, Lord God. Right now, thank you for the hope that we have in you, mighty God. Lord, we just worship you. Come on, church. Why don't you just lift your hands where you are and just declare that he is worthy. God, you're worthy. We love you. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you continue to do for us right now, Lord God. Oh, we worship you. Worthy is the name of Jesus. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Lord, we love you. We praise you this morning thank you Jesus thank you Jesus you are alive hallelujah you're alive and you're moving this morning you're moving in our midst Lord we just give you permission we give you rain to come and move in our hearts right now to come and do what you want to do in our hearts as we sit and receive your word God that you would transform us you would change us you'll do that work within us Father to make us more like you Lord God we pray, we thank you, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' awesome name we pray. Amen, amen. Well, bless you, church. We're going to hand over to Pastor Stephen right now. He's going to um, share the notices with us. So um, enjoy the rest of the service and be blessed. Thank you, Pastor Tim. And thank you, worship team, again for leading us in an uh, awesome encounter with the Lord. It's so good to be able to worship the Lord, isn't it? It's just, I, I love it. Every time we're worshiping God together, just refocusing our hearts on Him. Amazing. So cool. Well, I've, I've got a few notices and then we have got, uh, we're going to get into the Word of God this morning and we've got someone really special coming up to share the Word this morning. But before we get there, uh, we need to do birthdays. But I've, I've lost my co-host. Uh, she's off getting the kids ready for school and getting ready for a, uh, a wedding coming up in our family. So I'm going to have to do Susan as well. So uh, I'll see how I go here. So she stands about here and she's a little bit shorter. That's right. And uh, she has a, she has a big smile and uh, she says stuff like, Happy birthday to all the people having a birthday this week. Uh, happy birthday, Jono. Happy birthday, Lola. Happy birthday, Sylvie. Taylor. Happy birthday, see you. I mean, Mum. Happy birthday, Mum. And happy birthday, Loopy. Elizabeth McGicky. Man, there's a lot of people having birthdays this week. Anyway, happy birthday, Daryl. Michaela. Nara. Haley. Russell. Kian. Happy birthday. Jacob and happy birthday Katrine you all have an amazing week how'd I go did I do Susan very well <laughs> well I can see all these people get off get off sorry she'll be back next week but um yeah happy birthday to all of you amazing people I hope you have a truly awesome week and it's great to have a party and to celebrate turning another year older and wiser well, we want to uh, take up the tithes and offerings this morning. And as I was just thinking about what to share, I was drawn to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. 
I know there's some people who have lost their jobs recently, or maybe you're looking for a job, or maybe you're not sure what the future looks like for you, for all sorts of reasons. Psalm 37 is what the Lord laid on my heart this for you. Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. But instead, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. What a great promise. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. And it goes on and it says, Those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. And down here, this verse 25, I wanted to, to share with you. It says, I was young. This is King David talking. I was young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are always generous and lend freely. Their children will be a blessing. This is what God will do for you. The Word of God here. David says, I have observed that as we walk in righteousness, as we walk in generosity, that God takes care of our needs. He knows the needs. He knows the things in our life. And David said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. You can lay a hold of that. You can lay a hold of that promise and say, God, you'll make a way where there seems to be no way. I can put my trust in you. I want to encourage you today. If maybe doors have closed in your life, instead of getting negative about that, look up and trust in God and say, okay, God, help me find a new way. Our God is a God who makes a way through the sea. He's a God of innovation. He's a God who will, maybe one door closes, but something else will open for you. So I would just want to encourage you with that today, to, to, to lift your heart up, to have eyes of faith and to say, Lord, show me what is the new thing that you have for me. What's the new idea that you want me to be a part of in this coming season? Father, I pray for your people today and I pray for those that are looking for a job or that have some needs in their life. God, I pray that you would give them innovation, that you would be with them, that would, as they walk with you, God, you, your word declares that they will never be alone and that they will they won't have to beg for bread, God, that you will be there to carry them and to help them to be actually a generous blessing to others, Lord. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's take up our tithes and offerings. You can give online uh, or using the Tithely app. And uh, thank you for your generosity as we sow into the kingdom of God today. Well, I wanted to mention a couple of other things. Um, Tonga, I know that there's been a, a tremendous earthquake, a volcano over there and a tsunami. And as elders, we met this week and we were talking about that. And uh, we are going to uh, work out how we can best respond as a church. Some of the immediate needs are being taken care of by others, but we want to just make sure we, once we can establish communication with the churches and the pastors over there, that we do our part to support the people in Tonga as well. So um, we will be uh, sending some, some uh, gifts and some help, and once we have a clearer idea on what is actually needed. So uh, continue to pray for the people of Tonga. It's been a, a tough time over there for many of the families. And I know there are many initiatives that where people are helping as well. So uh, let's, let's all do our part there. And I'll um, let you know once we've figured out what we feel is the part that God wants us to play. Um, and coming up this, this week, uh, Susie and I will let you know probably Wednesday We'll try and put a video together and a communication together as to how we are going to move forward as a church in the next couple of months at least. Uh, how we're going to do church together, what that's going to look like. So um, look out for that in the middle of the week. And uh, lastly, it is my pleasure to introduce today uh, a, an amazing preacher. We have Pastor Anne Morrow. So when we were looking at finding some guest speakers for January, one of the team suggested, why don't we ask Anne Morrow? She lives down in Christchurch and uh, managed to 
get hold of a friend of mine and, and arrange it for him to go around and record her. The message was so amazing that I shared it with Pastor Adam, uh, who's over all of New Life, and he asked if we could send that out to all the New Life churches. And so I think a lot of the churches are watching this word today. Uh, so you're going to be really blessed by what Pastor Anne has to share. If you don't know who Pastor Anne is, her and her husband Peter uh, founded one of the earliest New Life churches in Christchurch uh, in 1962. And she is an incredible apostle of the faith. She's an amazing woman of prayer, a warrior. Uh, she is just carries an anointing and authority. Uh, and uh, I, I've had the privilege with Susie sitting down from time to time and having a chat with her. And she's just filled with power and authority and, and faith. Uh, and so uh, it's an, truly an honor to have her bringing the word of the Lord to us today. And I think a really timely word, actually, a word that will help us as we navigate our way forward. So uh, let's open up our hearts and let's get ready to receive the word of the Lord from Pastor Anne. Good morning, church at Manukau New Life, and a huge hello to Steve and Suzanne. And thank you for the awesome privilege of being able to just come and share a few thoughts with you today. And I've, I've chosen to actually uh, speak a wee bit about wisdom for processing transition. And I think as you get on and a little older, you sometimes realize that the greatest thing you lack is wisdom. But I just, before I actually start, I wondered if we could just pray. Heavenly Father, today we thank you for the opportunity to gather together in this way. And we thank you that, Lord, you long to give us wisdom. We thank you that your word declares if we lack it, that you will give it to us generously and liberally. And as we come before you today, I really pray for an impartation. I pray for solutions. I pray for inspiration by the Holy Spirit to touch many lives and restore in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Now, when we come to talk about wisdom, obviously one of the books that um, you would automatically go to is the book of Proverbs. And I just want to read just several scriptures from that because it's such a key to, I think, every facet of our life. And um, when we actually look at this, um, I, I, I sort of thought, where would I start? But I've just highlighted several here. It says, the one, my child, and this is from the Passion Translation, will you treasure my wisdom? Is it something that you long for? Then, and only then will you require it. And so train, and this is the thought I wanted to get, train your heart to listen when I speak. And open your spirit wide to expand your discernment and then pass it on to your sons and daughters. And then you will discover the true fear of the Lord and you'll find the true knowledge of God. Wisdom is a gift from a generous God and every word he speaks is full of revelation and becomes a fountain of understanding within you. And just maybe one other scripture from Proverbs 24, verse 3 and 4 from the Amplified. It says, through skillful and godly wisdom is a house or your life, your home, a family built. And by understanding, it is established on a sound and a good foundation. And by knowledge shall its chambers or every area of your life be filled with precious and pleasant riches. And so I, I just long that you, God will create in you a desire and a greater hunger to know what it is to walk in wisdom. <clears throat> now we've come to the end of what's been quite a traumatic year, 2021. And we all carry promises and we've all carried hopes for our families and cities. But how many for, for some of us, things did not work out like we thought? Life in many sectors, like in relation to our liberties, our economical and political situations, maybe just having a regular job, maybe it was in the education field. But 2021 was one of those suddenlies 
It was a year of interruptions. It was a year of change. But we thought, we prayed, and we hoped. And when I thought about that, I took me back to a passage in the scriptures in Luke 24, verse 13 to 35. But you will recall it when the disciples, several of them, were leaving Jerusalem and going back to Emmaus after the crucifixion. I guess if you tried to put themselves yourselves in that situation, their heads would have been spinning. Everything that they had thought had not gone according to their plan. And they'd seen Jesus go through the crucifixion. And then after all of that, they heard a report that some of the women had been to the temple and they said it was empty. And they were thinking, what next is going to happen? And so as they were walking along, someone joined them who they did not even recognize. And they asked, well, what's what's happening with you guys? And they said, don't you know what's been happening in Jerusalem? Because what Jesus, he appeared to them as a stranger and he appeared to not know what had been happening. And I could imagine him smiling as they began to tell him in, in a conversation what had happened. And they would start off by saying, we thought and we had hoped that he would redeem and rescue Israel. But things had not worked out like that. And of course, Peter, one of the other disciples, would have been going through a similar situation. And he had another plan. Okay, guys, I'm going back fishing. I'm going back to what I was comfortable doing. I'm going back to what I knew worked. And I think as they in that day, we are also in that situation. Things had changed. There was no going back. And for the disciples at that time, there was literally a new day, a new time, and a new season. It was a Kairos time. And I think we need to get and experience the wisdom to know the time that we are here in New Zealand, we need to get used to the fact that things are going to be very different. Life will not revert back to what we had known in the past. And sometimes we we like to try and make it happen like what we were familiar with. But I want to say this is a new day. And many things we have no control over. But God has given us new opportunities and responsibilities in how to respond. And I just want to remind you, like the disciples, we had hoped, but it's wonderful to know that God in his wisdom had everything under his control. Yes, he did redeem Israel, but not in the way they thought. They thought that crucifixion was the end, but the wisdom of God and and the incredible humiliation of the cross, but that opened the way for an expression of the greatest gift that any of us could know, Jesus Christ crucified, Jesus Christ ascended, and Jesus Christ now sitting at the right hand of God. And yes, for us here in New Zealand, God's plan and destiny has not changed. And for you and your life likewise. Yes, it's contended for by an enemy. An enemy who also has a plan to dominate, manipulate and control through many means. And I think one of the predominant means is to fear, a fear of failure, a fear of the future, a fear of disease, a fear of missing out. But I really believe God wants us to have wisdom to remind ourselves that as we, again, initially as we came to Christ, it wasn't just a call to a lovely walk in the park and being blessed, but coming to Christ, and I think I have felt this strongly, that this is a time of a new surrender to Jesus as our Lord and as our bridegroom. And surrender is such a key to wisdom. Because if we want to walk in wisdom, we must know what it is to be teachable 
And I love that scripture as, as I read in Psalm in Proverbs 2 where it says, train your heart to listen and then open your spirit wide. Let there be a sense of an expectation of receiving. And I think this is a time that uh, uh, where uh, we have a wisdom to realize there's a call to a relationship, a greater intimacy, a greater devotion to God. And along with that is that we become warriors. So can I say it like this? God, whatever arena God has placed you in, he never promised you what would be easy, but he made incredible promises of his grace and his power. And the confidence that he's working as he did at the cross, something so amazing and something so incredible that it will be eternal. But we hear a lot about the promises, but are we prepared to go through the process? And the problem with the process is that it takes time. But many times in the situation, in the scriptures, Many situations changed in a day. When we think of how many, like in Joseph, we think of David, we think of Esther, we think of Nehemiah. Many situations were changed in a day. But I believe God wants us to know what it is as we have this aspect of war that we're going to be prepared to fight for our families. And um, another book that has been really I think a key to the days that we're walking into is the book of Daniel. There is a new atheism out there, which is portrayed as the only intellectual and respectable worldview. There's an age of pluralism and relativism. And John Lennox has written a tremendous book where he says, against the flow, going against the flow, faces sometimes unbearable feelings of being different, of isolation, but I think as we look at Daniel, and I love, can I just mention this quote? The story of Daniel and his friends is a clarion call to our generation to be courageous, not to lose our nerve, and allow the, and not allow the expression of our faith to be diluted and squeezed out of the public space and thus rendered spineless and ineffective. Their story will tell us that this have how to be strong, but it will not be without a cost. As I've listened to many stories and walked with many people, it's astounding the situations that some of you are facing. But I want to say God has a word of wisdom for you and that these are not times for you to be overcome, but to stand and grow. Actually, in Proverbs 1 verse 1, and in the Passion, there's a footnote which says that the Hebrew word for Proverbs means more than just a wise saying. It can mean to rule, to reign in power, and to take dominion. And so as we talk about wisdom, as we talk about your situation, God does not want you to know that you are to go under, but what it is to be an overcoming. I have found that many of the scriptural narratives have become a reality and nations are in crisis. We've got fake news, we've got hidden agendas, but God wants to give, as we carry a promise, God wants you to know that there's a wisdom in how you faced opposition. What is your focus? And of course, we go back to Numbers 14, 9, where there was a time when God promised them that they would take the land. But for Joshua and Caleb, they came back. Yeah, we've seen the giants, but we're not impressed with them. We've seen the walled cities, but we want you to know that we are well able. And not only are we well able, but these giants that you see, they are bread for us. And when I thought about that, I thought there's a new take on the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Our giants can be our lunch. 
And of course, there's a well-known scripture, which I'll allude to a little later on, in Proverbs 23, where David said, he said, In the midst of my enemies, God, you've prepared a table. And sometimes when we're going through situations, we are more caught up with our enemies, what he's doing and how they're affecting us, and little realizing that God has prepared a table. And so in this time of transition, let us not be overwhelmed, but let us know what it is to draw upon him. Yes, another verse about wisdom in Proverbs 4, 7, Wisdom is the most valuable commodity, so buy it. And when I think about that, it's not something that's always readily available, but it is costly. And the reason that it's costly is because it's not just a handout, and it's not just an idea, but the source of our wisdom, and I just love this, because it's hidden in the person of Jesus Christ. And as God in our call for us is not just to give us ideas, not just to give us perspectives, they all come. But he first and foremost longs for a relationship with you. And oh, I think as I look back, I think, Lord, the most wonderful thing you've given us is Jesus, the source of our wisdom. Here's another wonderful promise in Proverbs 9. The key to wisdom is a key to fruitfulness. Wisdom will extend your life. Wisdom will make every year more fruitful than the one before. And as you look back and as you look forward, I trust there is a prayer. Lord, whatever it will mean, I long that it will be more fruitful. I long that it will be more, bring more honor and glory for you. And the key to that is wisdom. And of course, you can look at these other ones as you go through chapter 9. There is, it, wisdom will protect you from making poor choices. Wisdom will teach you how to live right and well. And wisdom will t give you an understanding of what true life means at this time and where it's going. Well, where is it going? And when we think about the future, our personal future, it can be overwhelming. But I think there's such a tremendous thing as we think about the future, we realize that we've not walked this way before. And as with Joshua, he said to the people, we've never walked this way before. We're coming to an end of an era. We're coming to a distinct stage in their history where there'll be a possession of a promise. There'll be a new consciousness of the enemy, but the ark, the presence of the living God, will be real for, to us. And I think a key to wisdom, sometimes you hear ministry and talk and prophetic words about acceleration, but acceleration is determined by our obedience. And as we talk about change and our willingness to change I believe in the future, I believe God wants to give us new mindsets, new ways of doing life. In Ezra, in, in chapter 8, verse 21, they prayed that they sought the God that he would show them the right way ahead for them, their families, and their finances, their possessions. And so, church... At a time like this, what are you asking God for? I pray you'll be asking for wisdom. And of course, you know, with Solomon, because that was the thing he asked for the most, God gave him so much else as well. And so as we come to wisdom, there's... Um, just a thought that in this time of transition, there has been several things that have been on my heart over this past year. And that has been the call of the warrior. And in these times of transition, as I thought about this, the scripture that really came to me was Psalm 18:32, And it said, through you, 
I will ascend to the highest peaks to stand strong, to stand strong and secure in you. Lord, you have trained me in the weapons of warfare worship, and now I'll descend into the battle. And this one in Proverbs 22, verse 22, a warrior filled with wisdom ascends into the high place. And you warrior, as you first and foremost ascend, you will know what it is to release breakthrough, regional breakthrough, bringing down the stronghold. And I've, as I've come to the end of a year and embrace another one, I reflect and think of the incredible circumstances, times when I felt so strong leading a charge. And at times, because of going through a major surgery, I felt rather than having leading, I've had to be carried. But I'm ever so grateful that we will in our lives find times like this and we all know what it is to lean heavily into him. And in this time of transition, I was thinking again of a well-known passage. You all know it so well in Psalm 23. And it says here, where David first of all says, Look, the Lord is my shepherd. He's not just saying, Oh, the Lord is my shepherd. He's saying, look who my shepherd is. And I think this is the time for us to discover again, look who your shepherd is. And as we know who he is, then we know who we are and what we will be. Actually, the condition of the flock was determined by the heart of the shepherd. And Proverbs 9.10 says the starting point for acquiring wisdom is to be consumed with awe as you worship God. And I just really pray that in this time, that's where we will start. That we will start, Lord, I will worship you. I will stand in awe of you. I will declare who you are, that you are blessed, you are true, that you are faithful. But then it goes on to say, he maketh me to lie down. And I think, oh, that word maketh, that means implying a little bit of force. It suggests that the sheep did not feel that they needed to do this right now. There was so much to do. They wanted to get on with their role and their calling. But the reason for the shepherd causing them to rest was not for what they felt right now, but he knew that the way ahead was one of ascending, and if the sheep were not rested, they would not make it. So they come alongside to be strengthened, to be revived, to be refreshed, to be restored. Resting doesn't just mean sleeping, much as all we felt we needed that, but I want to say, start this year taking time to reflect. Reflect, what am I carrying over from 2021? Or what have I buried? Disappointments, unreleased expectations, unforgiveness or offences. And I feel it's a time to let go of those things, things that will drain you, that will sidetrack you. And further on Proverbs, he gives us an invitation. My son, my daughter, give me your heart. And sometimes... We're afraid of what he might do, but divine surgery will only prepare you for the future. And not only that, but it's a time to reflect, okay, what really, really matters in my life? It's a time to define your core values. How's my relationship with God going? What about my family? What about my marriage? And as you a confirm and establish strong values, you will know what it is to make good decisions. And in the natural, as you're preparing to climb, it's a time of shedding. You don't want to take down, take up anything that will cause you to falter or slow you down. And I think this has been a time 
of shedding, of scaling down, and letting go of everything that really is not going to allow us to make the trip ahead. So that's the heart of the shepherd. I came across a quote by Brian Simmons as I was meditating on this, which was crafted so succinctly and more fully and deeply descriptive of what I was feeling. Let me read it to you. There are seasons to fight and seasons to rest. In these seasons when peace seems like nothing more than a dusty artifact and you can't find, find the right words to pray, you must remember your fears that God is your fierce protector. Trust him and you'll be safe in his arms. I'm not telling you to lay down and give up. I'm telling you, you must be okay with the stillness in the middle of the battle. Find a new refreshing in my presence so that you can receive a new strategy. And I just really think God has new strategies for us as we ascend. Just another little thought here. Um, as I've spoken about the bride and the call to war. And of course that goes back to Song of Solomon. And the story begins with a cry for intimacy, a cry for a kiss. It's an expression, oh God, I do long to know you more. But there was an honest confession of where she is. She, she feels she's neglected her own vineyard. She's been so busy attending to others that she hasn't been able to watch what was creeping into her own heart. And I love this word, this come again from the passion. The Hebrew word for kiss is a homomom, which means to arm for battle, to be equipped for war. But the first thing he does, he doesn't condemn her, he doesn't shame her, he brings her into a banqueting house. And I feel in a time of stillness, in a time of resting, God will bring you into a banqueting house and in that time you will be being prepared for war. For she finally emerges, and I think that's amazing, as the bannered one and every banner speaks of a battle that has been fought and a battle that has been made won. So God has gone ahead of us. Weapons are formed but they shall not prosper. And I guess I would probably turn as with this thought to Proverbs 31, often said as a woman's nightmare, but I just love again what the Passion talks about her. It talks and it talks, and this is what God wants you to be and wants us to be as we move into 2022. But this virtuous wife, it's used in connection with military prowess. It's a warring wife. It can be translated wealthy, mighty, excellent, full of substance, like a mighty army. And this is what I truly believe. She's full of substance, abilities and strength. And this is a metaphor for the last day church. She's full of wealth and she's full of wisdom. She girds herself with strength for her God-given tasks and her arms are strong and firm. But this is a scripture in Proverbs 20 that goes on to say when it comes to the future, strength and dignity are her clothing and her position is strong and secure. She rejoices over the future knowing that she and her family are in readiness for it. She laughs when she thinks of the future. What do you do? Can I just close with a little testimony? As we walked through the journey of Alzheimer's with Peter, one of the questions we talked about a lot, what's going to happen to us? What's our future going to be look like? Of course we carried a promise. Of course many had prayed. Of course we thought. And of course we hoped. And we were up at a Rodney Howe and Brown meeting and we, Peter and I were both on an altar call standing there together and we went down under the power of God. And as we went down under the power of God, very much in our hearts was, oh God, we know that you are the healer and the restorer. And as we were lying there, I had such a vision of us lying in a watery grave. And as I looked out into the 
distance, I saw this light coming towards us. And as I drew closer, it was absolutely dazzling. It was absolutely amazing. And I realized it was the Lord. And as he came toward us, drifted, we literally rose up to meet him. And I felt like he was going to stretch out his arms, which he did, to embrace us and maybe to assure us of his love. But as we came closer, he not only gathered us to get into him, he actually took us into himself. And when I looked at the vision again, no longer did I see Peter and I, but I saw that our lives were hid with Christ in God. And then I heard the Lord say to Anne and Peter, this is your future. And that was a tremendous, tremendous promise when I consider the future, that as we walk through that journey, as I now walk through this journey, as a warrior and as a bride, that he has my future in hands. And so I want to encourage you to be strong and courageous. I want to encourage you to seek wisdom. And as Paul prayed, as would be my prayer, as it is constantly in my life most days, I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, and over you, church, that he would impart to you the riches of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. And that there will be a new emerging, that you won't be docile and passive, but you will be bold and courageous, confident in God, confident in his plan for 2022. And this will happen because you've stopped to listen, you've reflected, you've evaluated, and you've dealt with stuff. You've known what it is to scale down, to know what it is to ascend and then descend with power and with grace and with wisdom. Thank you. Shall we just pray? Father, I just really thank you and I pray for each one who's listening to this today. I thank you, Lord, that your word also declares, don't you know that I'm ready to pour out to you the spirit of wisdom upon you and to bring you a revelation of my words that will make your hearts wise. And I really pray, Father, because of the impartation of wisdom, we will know what it is to build skillfully in our homes, in our marriages, in our relationships, in our communities, in our churches, and in our homes, that we'll be open to the new wisdom, to the new ideas, to the new ways that you are birthing in our hearts and in our minds. And we bless you for that today. And thank you for a new future which is our lives being hid with Christ in God. Amen and amen. Bless you. Bless you, Stephen and Susan, too, and your leadership and your church as you walk in to 2022. Bless you. Wow. Wow, that was, that was a truly awesome word. Um, just some nuggets of gold. And there, I, I want to encourage you, if you were really blessed by that word, um, why don't you go back this week and listen to it again? In fact, there have been some great messages. Pastor Jim's word last week was so good. Uh, if you haven't heard that, you want to hear that. There's been Steve's word, Stacey Ann, Sam's word. Over this month, we have been super blessed. The teaching and the encouragement from the Lord. Some of you might have missed some of those messages. You might have been on holiday. I just want to encourage you, go back and have a listen to that stuff. Fill your heart with the Word of God. Wow, I, I just, I love that message. I'm going to listen to that message again from Pastor Anne and just get my notebook out and just say, Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying to us here in this time? Be blessed, church. Have a fantastic week. Take care. God bless.